Welcome to this brand new series of 360 camera comparison. We will test and compare the most popular 360 VR cameras and show you instead of telling you which camera is better in 360 VR. And you can watch this in a VR headset like here, the Oculus Go. In today's episode, we are going to look at the stitching quality both in app and in software during post-production. We will compare all this camera you see right here, including the brand new Kendall Cool Cam. This is a 360 video, and I highly recommend you to watch this with your VR headset, and here is the instruction on how. Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy Hugh here from Creator Up. If you are wondering what camera I'm shooting this right now, I am shooting this with the Antonia HAL 250 Fish Islands with the Panasonic GH5. Right here, this camera. And all this camera right here, they are all under $600. Consumer cameras. If you are interested in professional VR cameras, go check out my other series, which is right here. And let's jump right into the first camera. So the first one, we have the Kendall Cool Cam. This is a brand new camera just released last week, and you probably see the test footage here first on this channel. So let me just explain the set a little bit so you know where to look for, look for stitching issue. So right now I'm facing forward for the camera. If you see behind me, uh, you see a focal chart in the distance. So if you want to see how sharp this camera, you can see if you actually still see the focus on that distance. That's pretty far away. So follow me on here. Here right now, I'm in the stitch line area between the two lens. So I'm actually like moving around the stitch line. So I keep walking. If you see in the back of the camera, uh, we have a mixed lighting scenario. Outside is really bright and inside where I start a video is actually really dark. And then on the other side here, it's actually five feet away. By the way, if you want to know the distance between object to the camera, if you look down, you see there's a measuring tape right there. From here, from, from this point forward is zero, all the way to the chair there is seven feet. And the camera to this focal chart is five feet away. So that's a good one now because this focal chart is wide on top, like wide on the stitch line, on the right side of the stitch line. And pay attention on the focal chart right here. See if you can still see sharp focus to find out how good is the stitching on the stitch line with this camera. And that is a really good way to find out. So again, I'm gonna keep going back to the other side and now I'm gonna sit down and right now I'm just sitting two feet away from the camera. That is actually really close to the comfort distance. In a real life scenario, you never try to be that close to the camera, but I'm trying to lean toward the camera Now I'm touching the camera and lean back. Lean toward the camera again, lean sideways. So pay attention to my face to see if my face got cut off, if there are optical flow artifacts and all the other problem. So now you see how good is the stitching of this camera. So now let's move on to the next camera. Next up, we have Rilo. This is a new camera to me because I just got this camera. So again, look at me, look at the distance, see the focal chart over there, see how sharp is this camera, and follow me around and walk to the stitch line area. So right now I am in the Rilo stitch line area. Move around and see how good is the stitching in about five feet away from the camera. But I keep walking. Now I'm in the really bright area. If you look at outside again, uh, it's a mixed lighting scenario. Outside is really bright. Indoor is kind of dark. But the best way to look at the image, the stitching quality of Rilo is actually right here. Look at the focal charts. Again, look at the chart right here. See how good, how sharp is the image from this focal charts. And is there any optical for weirdness in here? But let me keep walking over. And now I'm just sit down two feet away from the Rilo, really close again. If you look
distance. You can look down to actually see the measuring tape right here to see the distance between uh, the subject and the camera. But again, now I'm going very, very close to the rhino, touching the rhino. My nose just touched the rhino, my hand just touched the rhino. Now I'm just moving left, moving right, my back face. You can see how good is the stitching in close distance for the rhino. I'm even go up on top. My hand is on top right now. See how good is the top stitching of the rhino as well. So now you should see the rhino stitching quality. So let's move on to the next camera. So next up we have everybody favorite GoPro Fusion. Again, look at the distant object to see how good, how sharp is this camera. Uh, this is a very good camera capturing 5.2K right now. So why now I am right on the stitch line of the GoPro Fusion. So again, see me, if you're seeing weird of this GoPro stitching. And then I walk into the bright area, which is the outside, keep walking. And now the best way to see stitching quality is again, look at the focus. right here right on the stitch line and check out how good is the focus on this chart and see how sharp is the image and then continue working circle back right here I'm gonna sit down two feet away again look at the measuring tape right here two feet away from the camera just look at the camera smile and slowly lean into the camera so close and touching the camera with my nose. Now I'm very still very close. I got a left. And right, you can smell my breath right now. You can really smell in a virtual reality, right? Okay, so that is the GoPro Fusion in stitching. So let's move on to the next camera. Next up, we have the Yi which is among all these camera I just test, shot the highest resolution is 5.7K to 60 mono video. Again, look at the distance chart to see how sharp is this camera. And then follow me again and go to the stitch line area. Right now I'm right on the stitch line. As you see, go left and right and see how good is the stitching. And then I keep walking to a challenging outside scenario right here, which is really bright. So look at how good is the mixed lighting scenario of this camera. And then again, the most important part is look at the focus charge right on the stitch line area to see how sharp is the, sorry, focus charge right here. See if you can see it clearly of this. Uh, resolution charge. And then I'm gonna go sit down right here again, two feet away from the camera. Look at the camera smiling. And then I'm slowly gonna lean into the camera and touching the camera with my nose. And then a little bit far away from the camera. Now I look left. I look right. And I lean back. See how good is the stitching of the E. Okay, so now you see the E, let's move on to the next camera. The next one, we have again, another everybody favorite camera, the Insta261, which is very affordable and also really great camera and really small camera as well. So again, look at the fur distance to see how good is the focus in the distance. And again, I'm keep walking into the stitch line area on the left stitch line of the Insta261. Moving around, see how good is their optical flow stitching. And now I walk into the line. So I am probably blown out right now because the outside is really light. So I keep walking over here again, look at the focus chart. See how good is the focus chart uh, with the camera. Okay, take a look. And then again, I walk over right here, sit about two feet away from the camera. And then slowly lean toward the camera, touching the camera with my nose. And then lean left. 
Lean right. Lean back. Okay, now so you see the stitching, the optical flow stitching of the Insta 261. So let's move on to the next camera. Last, we have the Xiaomi Mi Sphere, which is a very, very popular camera like about six months ago and still very popular. It's the cheapest camera that I would suggest anybody should purchase in, if you want to get a first beginner 360 camera. Again, look at the sharpness of the camera, the long distance. I walk into the Sitra area. This camera is really skinny, so the Sitra is actually really good, supposed to be, but I'm still trying to look around. And then you see the Sitra area. Again, walk into the really bright area under the sun. Make sliding scenario, keep walking. The focal chart right here, right here. Look at the focal chart. Look at how good, how sharp is the focus right here. And then again, sit down on the chair and lean toward touching the camera. Great. Got lean left, lean right. Okay, lean back. So now you should see how good is the stitching of this camera now. So in conclusion, all cameras tested have some sort of optical flow artifacts. GoPro Fusion and Kendall Kukan have a better safe distance, around one foot. The Fusion arguably has the best safe distance and you can go closer than one foot, which is very impressive consider the thick body the camera has. The Rilo come close third and the Yi is number four. For Insta 261 and Misphere, you will need to stay more than three feet away from the stitch line to avoid the stitching problem. And Misphere seem to be more than five feet. Both GoPro Fusion and CoolCam have some kind of chromatic aberration and the CoolCam is pretty obvious. In terms of sharpness, Rilo and Fusion are very sharp around the stitch lines, but they do not handle motion very well. If you have a moving object around stitch line, even the object is far away if it causes some kind of optical flow artifacts. And E and Insta261 is worse, as motion costs ghosting and very slow auto correction time. So overall, I think Fusion and CoolCam has the best stitching. Rhino come very close except the weird optical fold drifting. He is not bad. I would say number four, the Insta261 is not so good at optical flow stitching. But again, Fusion, CoolCam, E all rely on software stitching in post. Insta261 is using a mobile phone to stitch. So if you are talking about mobile stitching, Rhino definitely is the best. Misfear, well, it's time for you to upgrade your 260 camera if you have a Misfear. The industry moves so fast, a six month old tech is like six years old. Luckily, the Misphere is very cheap. Thank you for watching this episode of 260 Camera Comparison. The next episode, we will focus on stabilization. To find out which 260 camera is best on drone, on a hoverboard, and for other sports and activities. If you like action sport and if you want to capture it in immersive, 260 VR, definitely don't miss out that episode. Give me a like if you find this video helpful and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell for the future episodes. The 2D version of this video will be available on IGTV, Instagram TV. So follow me on Instagram as well and I will see you next time.